time to tackle finite state automata, which are our finite state machines without output. I wanted to give you the three representations of these FSAs uh, as a table, as a state diagram, and as the official definition so that we can compare it to what we just finished in the previous section. So in the definition here, we see that a finite state automata M is made up of five things this time. S, which is a set of states. I, which is our input alphabet. F, the transition function that takes a state and an input pair and outputs the next state that the uh, machine moves into. S0, which is the initial state of the machine. And finally, F, which is a subset of states. And F are considered the final or accepting states of the machine. So compared to a, a finite state machine with output, we do not have our output alphabet or our output function G. Uh, we simply have the states, the inputs, the transition function, the, the specified start function, and then something called our final or accepting states. Final states are displayed as uh, double circles in our state diagram. So in the diagram given here, there are two final states. Um, and so we can say that the set F is state 0 and state 3. Now, finite state automata are, we're told in the book that they're used for recognizing languages. And I don't think they mean like Chinese. Instead, they're thinking about mathematical languages, and we're going to have to define a few things along the way. So a vocabulary is simply a non-empty, finite set of symbols. This is your alphabet, essentially. Uh, so your vocabulary might be the set 0, 1, or the letters A, B, C, D, E. Um, it's what your building blocks are. Uh, and if V is your vocabulary, a word over V is just a finite string of these symbols. So we've done this before. You can take a binary word, 10110. Zero, one, one, That's a word over the vocabulary 01. And, and CAB cab is a word over the vocabulary ABCDE. We will have an empty string, just like we have an empty set, but the empty string gets um, denoted by lambda. Uh, and then we can talk about a set of all possible words over our vocabulary. And this set of words is called V star. So it has to be a finite string of vocabulary symbols. Uh, but that's sort of our superset. Languages are then subsets of V star. And V star, the star ought to be a little bit reminiscent of something you did back in 321 when we looked at the closure uh, for the transitive relation. And we called that R star. And we found R star by taking all possible finite unions of R with itself. Uh, in this case, we're going to take finite concatenations of higher values of, of words of particular lengths with itself. So that's what a language is. It's just some identifiable subset of words. In the book, we talk about a string or a word being recognized by one of these machines. And it's recognized if, starting with that string at the initial state, you work your way through the automata and you end up, you, you terminate at a state that is in the final set F. Then that word is accepted by the machine. Um, and 
the language recognized by a particular automata is going to be the set of all strings recognized by the machine. Um, there's a technicality. You can create a machine to recognize a language in more than one way, and um, if there are two finite state automata that recognize the same language, they're called equivalent. And that is, in fact, an equivalence relation, but we won't worry about the details of that for a moment. Uh, so let's try and put this into practice. Here is an example, a very, very simple finite state automata. The input language, the input symbols are 0 and 1. I have two states, uh, state S0 and S1. Uh, and let's see uh, what happens here. Let's begin by asking which of the following strings are accepted by this finite state automata. Uh, let's just start with the very first string. Um, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So what we do is we start at our initial position and we follow what happens for each symbol. The first one brings me back to S0. The second one brings me back to S0. The third one brings me back to S0, followed by the 0, which pushes me over to S1, and a 0, which pulls me back to state S1. So after processing this string, we end up at state S1, which is not an accepting state, so the first string, 11101, one, one, is rejected. Why don't you take a minute, pause for a second, and work through the three remaining strings. All right, if you've done your work, I hope you found that there's only one string in this group that is recognized by our finite state automata, and that is the sequence 1, 1, 1. So we could also ask the question of what's the language recognized by this particular machine. And it's clear in our analysis, I hope, that to remain in the accepting state, which is also our initial state, the only symbol you can see is a 1. So in fact, the language of this machine will be all finite strings of ones, uh, or, I, I did forget one, or the empty string, lambda. I hope that makes sense. So, let's try again. What is the language accepted by the machine given below? Again, Let's, I, I'll have you pause for a moment, try and figure it out, and then we'll come back and talk about it together. All right, so in your analysis, what did you find? Notice when you start at, at the initial state, you stay in this state every time you see a symbol of zero. To move out of this state you have to see at least one one in your string. That moves you to the accepting state S1. Uh, any further ones that you might find will leave you in this state, but if you should see another zero you get pushed out, you get booted out of paradise, you get sent to state S2, and then regardless of whether you see a 1 or a 0, you stay entirely in S2. So the only way to terminate here in S1 is if you start with any number of zeros followed by at least one 1 and any number of 1s. The way you can represent this is the language of the machine is a string 0 to the m 1 to the n, where the exponent is telling you how many times that symbol is repeated in the string. And m, in this case, can be 0. I can start, you can start off with a 1 in your string, and you will move 
directly into uh, the final accepting state S1, uh, but N has to be 1. There has to be at least one 1 to occur to move you out of the state S0. Right, the last thing I'm going to do here is ask you now to create two, um, two finite state automata knowing which languages you want to recognize. So here they are. Uh, try it and then go to the next tape.